Okay, we are here with Gavin Dunn. And you have this incredible story about this olive-fed wagabi and Megalisa pig. Yes, I So do. tell us how this all happened. Well, I came across a small farmer in Japan who uh, a hundred years ago someone had planted olive trees in his land. It was just a small amount of olive trees. And he fed them, fed the waste of the olives to his cattle and he won the Wagyu Olympics in Japan for best fat. And I was like, hmm, there's no, there's no olives in Japan. There's no real commercial opportunity in Japan. But I was living in Greece at the time and I opened my front door and I'm surrounded by olive trees. So I saw a commercial opportunity to produce it. So we bought some Wagyu cattle. We fed them the olives, and then we sent the meats to, to the laboratory to test the different levels of glutamic acid, oleic acid, monounsaturated fats, and they were all super increased after the olive feed. And then we tasted the meat, and it was absolutely exceptional. So I knew I had something. And from there, we created the Olive Feed Corporation, and now we're supplying olive feed all over the world. We're producing olive fed pork, olive fed Wagyu all of fed duck and we're distributing the meat in Asia, Europe and America. So that's the story. That is incredible, but there's a historic moment here tonight though. Very historic. So tell us about the very historic moment that we had a, a special what? So this brand uh, Umami all of fed, this is from a ranch in Texas. Like, they produce the best Wagyu in America because they incredible philosophy of raising animals, of complete serenity, of zero stress. You know, everybody can have great genetics and a great feed plan, but it's actually how you raise the animals. That's what delivers the marble scores. Because when they're not stressed, they're not burning energy, they're not burning through that marbling. And so this is why the, these guys are amazing at what they do. Paddy Birdwell, Tony Tristani, are, you know, the, the best Wagyu producers in the country. They now exclusively produce for me. And uh, when that opportunity was available, I took it pretty damn fast to be honest and I don't blame with you. you. Yeah. And we're also doing it to say, you know, the olive fed Okay. Here we go. Now, this is the one tonight. This is the made history tonight, right? The first ever Mangalita olive-fed pig in the world. Ever. Ah, and we had it tonight, and it was absolutely exceptional. You can see that beautiful marbling that comes through there, and this is what gives it the flavor. Right. The olive feed changes the profile of the fat. Right. Gives it the glutamic acid, the umami. This is where we get the brand name because umami in, in Japan means flavor. Right. The sweet, salty, sour, bitter, and umami. It's the right. Rocky, easy flavor in Japan. And that's what we bring to the table with this. So, a lot of people would say, when I first did my research on that, I thought you were like feeding olive oil, but no, it's not olive oil. It's no. the byproduct of the olive, correct? So, what, what, olive waste is olive waste. It's, it's the skin, skin it's, the, it's the flesh. It's yeah, the yeah. stone, and even inside the stone, there's a seed. Right. So all of this gets crushed up, and it's, it's like a, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like a mulch. And since the 1950s, the biggest agricultural companies in the world have been trying to feed this to animals, but because of the high tannin content, it's not digestible. So the animals lose weight, and they begin to, can potentially get sick. And our uh, process that we've painted to caramelize the olive waste, this makes it palatable, so they have to eat it. It makes it digestible and it makes it safe. So that's why it's a successful feed, but the fact that it makes the meat incredibly flavorsome, that's what makes it a successful commercial opportunity because the farmer makes more money, he sells his meat for more money, the distributor makes more money, the restaurant makes more money, the customer is happy because they've had better meat, healthier meat, yeah. lighter meat. So, you know, it all, it's a win, 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 win for everybody. Now we tasted all of these. I have to say, we could eat like a lot more of this than we usually could. Yeah, this is this is the monounsaturated fat ratios. When you feed the olive feed, the mono ratio goes up to saturated. Right. So you can eat a whole steak of olive fed wagyu, right. and you want another one after it. Yeah, yeah. Whereas you know, a couple of ounces of typical full blood Japanese wagyu, you need to go to bed afterwards. Yeah, yeah. And you're not sure if you regret ordering it or not. But this is the, the mono fat saturated fat profile changes, so this really makes a huge difference to this. Now this has been a fabulous experience. We're way up in the air here above the Las Vegas Strip. 
I wish you all the best. I cannot wait to have more of it. And we're going to go to Texas actually to visit where it all comes from. Can't wait to, can't wait to bring you down. I cannot wait. Yeah. All right, cheers. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank you very much.